Hey guys, so today we are doing some deep cleaning. <laughs> Much needed. Much needed. Much needed. <laughs> I like to think of it as fall cleaning instead of spring cleaning because we do tend to clean the RV deep, you know, maybe twice a year, if that. Okay, maybe once a year if we're being honest. However, with over a hundred days of boondocking this summer and the last couple weeks have been spent in campgrounds where we didn't have sewer hookups, we are now on full hookups, which is amazing, and which means we have unlimited access to water because a lot of our deep cleaning has to do with water. So, with that said, are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's get going. All right. Although, what's the one thing that makes, uh, where'd I put it? Deep cleaning a little easier on us here. Well, mine is over here. <laughs> of course, <Yeah>. a beer. <laughs> Can't deep clean without it. Don't worry, guys, it's at least after noon. Yeah, we waited a little long to uh, get in there, <laughs> but uh, we're drinking uh, Hawaiian oh, yes. beers, so we're feeling very <laughs> tropical today. Yes, and we finally got blue skies up here in the Pacific Northwest for the first time in quite a while, so we're ready to take advantage of the beautiful day and get some stuff done. So let's roll that intro. So first up is sanitizing our freshwater system. We haven't done this in over a year and with all this boondocking, and I know we are at one suspicious freshwater campground. Um, so we just like to, to do this minimum once a year. Uh, we've already created our bleach and water solution, which we got out of our manual here. And so it tells us um, roughly six gallons of water and one and a half cups of bleach. That's for our 100 gallon tank. But luckily our RV came with a um, onboard water pump that allows us to siphon water in. So there's actually a sanitized option here. So I just have to turn my knobs to make sure they match this picture and dunk this in our bucket here and then turn on the water pump. So it should self-prime, there you go, and I hear it, and so now it is uh, sucking the solution up and into our fresh water tank. So then once uh, it gets into our fresh water tank, we'll continue to fill up the tank uh, to make sure it gets up to the top, and we'll run water through all the lines. And then we'll let it sit overnight. All right, and now we need to fill the freshwater tank, and so we're actually replacing our hose at this point. Unfortunately, the hose we like is uh, not available from Amazon right now, so we're waiting till it's back in stock to buy it. But for now, we have this extra, just regular white hose that we usually use when we're uh, filling our bag when we're boondocking. So we'll just use that until we're able to get our new hose. So now that our freshwater tank and all of our freshwater lines are gonna be completely sanitized and clean, uh, what better time than now to implement a new filter system? Uh, we've currently been using the blue filter, which is like a 100 micron filter uh, when we're filling up our um, bag when we're boondocking or just on the lines here. And then we have an onboard filter that's 10 micron. Um, and that's just been our system. But we had a friend recently reach out to us and suggest getting the Clear 2O's green filter because it actually filters down to one micron. And it's the same one that goes outside. Um, that looks like the blue one. So we are looking into that and then Clear Toe actually reached out to us and asked if uh, we would wanna try out any of their products. So we said absolutely yes. And so we opted for the dual canister system from Clear Toe. -O. So let's open that and check it out. Uh, so this will be our main RV water filter system. So the reason that I really like the Clear Toe canisters are they actually have 
um, the picture here, I can't really, sh I'll show you in a minute, but they have pressure gauges on each of the canisters. And so that's something that we found when our onboard filter is getting a little um, nasty, clogged <laughs> and it's ready to change, our water flow will actually start to drop rather drastically. So um, that's one of the things that I really like about this is we'll be able to tell, is it like a dirty filter without having to take the, the whole filter system off or are we getting water pressure from our water pressure regulator, which has a, a gauge on it. And then we'll be able to check each of the filters um, so we can see that the pressure going into our rig, which is really nice. So yeah, that's awesome. They have all this nice packaging and then it's a nice, yeah. Frame for it to go on. Well, that is nice. So. Cool. Yeah. What are these? Uh, those are some sort of indicator. Oh, which, maybe to replace them or? Yeah, maybe when the pressure gets to a certain amount. Um, let's see. What else did this come with? Oh, okay. Attachments. And then this, if you don't know, is to help unscrew these because sometimes they can be a little tricky. All right, so uh, first impressions. It's a <laughs> pretty sturdy stand and I, I really like that. Yeah. Uh, Cause the, the little flimsy stand that our onboard filter is connected to, if I have to use this wrench to like get it off like really hard, uh, it kind of like twists the little flimsy stand that it's connected to and it, <laughs> it scares me. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm afraid I'm just gonna rip it out of the wall. So this is definitely solid. I think right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and install this outdoors, but I will most likely move this inside. I think I need to get a little bin for it to sit in. Um, Cause on mm. our onboard filter, when I remove the canister, a little bit of water does spill out. Mm. So. Um, yeah, catch. Yeah, so I'll get a little catchment yeah. basin. I just noticed that we could mount it. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, so we'll definitely mount it inside once I find a spot for it. Open the next box. All right, so <laughs> um, this is great, but it is large. Um, so personally, I don't like this large system, especially if we're out boondocking and I want to just quickly go fill up our, our water bag. I don't want to have to bring it all. And filtering the water, going from the water bag to the system is difficult because it really slows down transitioning from the water bag to the RV. So I like to pre-filter it as it's going into the water bag. Yeah. Um, so for that, uh, we asked them to send us the Clear 2O green one. So green one, that's what we meant by that. You can get these at Walmart and whatnot. So it's, it's the blue one will filter hundred micron, which are like big pieces. Like it'll filter like sand and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and this will filter one micron, which is getting pretty close to having absolutely nothing in your water. Yes. So the problem <laughs> with it filtering one micron is that it has this really fine, fine mesh. And so the water has to go through it. So if you do get some of that like bigger sand or sediment on there, uh, it actually clogs up the filter pretty fast. And so Clear 2O has come out with something um, to help with that. And it's not just for their filters, it's for all these little screw on filters. It's called a dirt guard. And this is a uh, 20 micron filter. So still smaller than the, the blue ones but it removes all of that sediment and all of that. Like, it's kind of like a pre-filter. So it makes your uh, more expensive replaceable filters last a lot longer. Um, and it just goes outside and you're actually able to like kind of like clean off the buildup on this filter, which is awesome. So this is their dirt guard. This is their one micron filter. And we'll use this uh, when we're filling up our bag, when we're boondocking. All right, yep. and this is pretty much comparable in price to the blue filter, so. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Like but. 17 versus 25, but it's, it's worth it because uh, you get cleaner water.
Okay, so now that we have our fresh water tank soaking up all that solution, we are now moving on to some tasks on the inside. And I'm gonna throw this out there. We connected the fresh water hose back and we're using city water to fixtures for now. But tonight we're gonna switch over to our pump. We're gonna pump water out of the fresh water tank into our fixtures. So that way, not only is our fresh water tank getting sanitized, but that solution is now going to be in all of our water lines and all of our water lines are gonna be sanitized as well. Okay. So now that we have that cleared up, I have a little solution of just soap and water and my beer <laughs> in the sink. And we are now going to take off all of our filters. Yeah. How's it going in here? Yeah, these actually aren't too bad because I feel like we haven't used them a ton oh, over that's the last true. year um, since the last time I did this. This we do fairly regularly. But, um, Quarterly? yeah, we haven't been using our AC as much because we've just been following the weather and we've been boondocking a lot yeah, more. So, uh, we haven't really needed the AC. So, that's yes. nice. So, yeah, those actually don't look too bad. Yeah. However, our bathroom one <laughs> looks pretty dang gross. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely been using this fan a lot more and it is so powerful. I, love I it. know. I love it too. So we're going to take down all of the AC filters, all of the fan filters, and actually the air purifier that we use in the bedroom. We're going to wash that filter as well. So we're going to let those soak. It's very important once you wash off all the dirt to then dry them and dry them. Got it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, it's important to dry them completely. And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't exactly know why, but I read that when we first started RVing that you need to dry your filters completely before putting them back on. I'm assuming it has to do with like, you don't want to get water in there. Or don't want it to get moldy. I don't know. Yeah. Your guess, if you know, let me know in the comments. But I wanted to pass that information along just in case, you know, probably a pretty important important step so we're gonna get these soaking and then we are going to do something that we desperately need to do and I bet you might too all right so this next task is in my mind a huge undertaking I don't think it will take us too long but it's just the sheer amount of things we have to do so we haven't done it since <laughs> we bought the RV yes which is disgusting and what we were talking about is actually cleaning the screens that are inside yeah so <laughs> we've cleaned all the tracks we've taken them off before but we've never taken all the screens mm -hmm. off and cleaned all the screens and there's a reason why we're doing it even now yes all right i'm just gonna let you show them so why don't you take this one off right. <laughs> this happened this year <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> so what is all this fuzzy stuff <laughs> so we stayed uh in outside of Billings at um, this free campground and it actually had a ton of cottonwood mm -hmm. and it was boondocking or dry camping I guess and so we had all of our windows open because it was hot and this cottonwood just got sucked into every single yeah. screen because so. we opened at some point or another we opened every single window while we were there. Yeah, so um, a lot of it has fallen out. There's, this is probably one of the, the worst ones, but like when we were there, it was absolutely disgusting. Yes. Um, so we've opened the windows since then and some of it's it's gone out, but now let's <laughs> start taking off all the screens. Yes. washed all the screens in the living room 
wiped down all of the window seals with Clorox wipe because those have not been wiped down ever and we are now getting ready to dry the screens they look pretty dry but we just want to make sure they're totally dry and put them back but before we do that I wanted to share with you a little tip if you didn't know about this so since we have all the windows screwed open right now we're actually gonna put a little baby powder in a sock and then we are going to tap the outside of all of the seals and that helps prevent some sticking in the windows so super easy trick and I'm going to do that on all of the seals before we put the screens back but we're looking pretty good and I'm feeling pretty hopeful because this was the most screens in one room so we only have two in the bedroom and two out here in the kitchen so we got the majority done feeling good all right let me go just show you how to use this okay so this is what I'm gonna do on every window just where the seal touches the window I'm gonna take the baby powder and you can see it's already coming through the sock there and I am going to just dab that on Ooh, and we're getting some baby powder in here but that is okay Alrighty. so you do that where the window touches the seal you can do this like outside on a ladder. I'm obviously just doing it this way because the screens are off and it's easier. Alrighty, and then that should help when you open your windows, like there's no sticking. So there you go. And you can actually do this on your slide out seals. Um, we've done it before we replace the Max Air fan it was sticking and the vent wasn't opening all the way so we've done it on the max air vent, vent seal like anywhere you have a seal or anywhere you're getting any type of sticking just throw some baby powder on it all right i got more windows to do I think we're gonna call it tonight yeah yeah we got a late start today <laughs> we finished all the screens and that was mm -hmm. the thing that we have been delaying for three years so and dreading doing yeah but I'm so glad we did it I actually highly recommend doing that because yep. if you haven't done it it is nasty under there and my allergies were so bad this year so I'm sure Continuing to have that, you know, cottonwood in there and whatever else has just been sitting in there, I'm sure that has not been helping my allergies. So by cleaning the vents, cleaning all the screens, cleaning out the windows, I'm really hoping that I will feel a little better. I'm still struggling with allergies, by the way. Like, come on. The <laughs> year's <it's> almost over. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do another deep cleaning item tomorrow morning that I am excited to show you. And I think that will help finish up with some allergies that might still be, uh, or pollen that might still be sitting in here. And um, I don't know, we have a couple more things to show them tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Good morning, guys. So it is day two of some deep cleaning projects. And we actually decided to add one to the list last night after we stopped filming, of course. We wanted to deep clean the black tank because, again, lots of boondocking. We haven't been able to do as much flushing as we normally like to when we're at dump stations. So we ended up emptying the black tank last night. We put a scoop of Happy Camper in there and then we filled it. That way the Happy Camper kind of gets to just soak overnight. We did put a little uh, Dawn dish soap down there as well. Dawn dish soap say that five times fast. So that kind of soaked overnight and then we opened it this morning and we did two big flushes where we actually closed the tank, let it fill up and then opened it again. So the water is running perfectly clear now. So we have a very clean black tank. So I'm getting ready to move on to the second item here. 
Jason is finishing up the blog article and sending out the newsletter for today because business still has to keep going. So what I am doing today is steam cleaning our living room. And, um, oh, I forgot the steam cleaner. Let me get that. Okay, just grabbed it from the basement. Yes, we call our under storage the basement. So it's just a handheld one. We actually got this because Carmen ended up throwing up on the carpet like six months into full-time RVing and she hasn't had any accidents or puking since. However, there was just, I don't know, one day I was like, this carpet is kind of grossing me out and vacuuming it a million times wasn't helping. So I decided to use, I was really nervous, but I decided to use the handheld steam cleaner on the whole carpet and it helped get out that like dog smell. The carpet looked cleaner and I, I really like it and I, I'm hesitant to recommend you steam clean your own stuff without saying that I use the handheld one and yes, it's a little more tedious to do your whole carpet by hand, but I like it because I have 100% control on how much water is coming out. And I know on the big ones, you obviously push a handle and the water comes out as well, but those sprayers just douse it, you know. Underneath this carpet, I'm pretty sure is just like a piece of foam and then the OSB uh, plywood. Even though it's marine grade, I don't really wanna be getting that very wet. I really don't soak the carpet, then I immediately have fans out and I put the dehumidifier on and it's dry rather quickly, like probably within one to two hours. I've seen people steam clean carpets in motorhomes a lot, but I've never really seen anyone do it in a fifth wheel and or a travel trailer. And I think it's because of the material underneath. So if you're gonna do this, be careful. However, if you have a 28, late 2018 grand design or newer, you're not gonna have this problem because they don't even put carpet in, in them anymore. But I do think that the reason our carpet has lasted the three and a half years we've had it and still looks good is because I do do this two to three times a year. So it's time, it's starting to smell like dog. I'm sure you know that smell. Anyway, those are my tips if you're gonna steam clean. Uh, a little more tedious by hand, but you have full control of how much water is getting into your carpet. So with that said, I then also, um, I did the pet and stain one, even though we don't have any stains, that I think this is what helps get rid of that dog smell out. And it's just the same brand. This is, um, yeah, this is a Bissell, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. So this one's called, it's meant for pets, which is why we bought it, because we only did that spot at first when she threw up, but now we use it for the whole thing. And then I put just a little bit of awesome in there. I love this stuff. I used it on everything. It was really my only type of cleaning product before we started RVing. However, I have read on some of the forums not to use awesome on the outside of your rig, not to use it on your awning, and I think I read somewhere not to use it on your shower. So I don't use it on those things. Okay, so with all that said, I'm now gonna start vacuuming. When I vacuum before I steam clean, I run the vacuum over like two or three times. I really try and get every little speck of dirt off I can before I steam clean, because I don't wanna be sucking up dirt into this thing. I just wanna be getting out um, the smell, I guess. I'm making it sound like we're really stinky and I swear we're not. So, all right, let's get started. Living room is done. I think it's looking really good. We got the fan going to dry it out. We have the dehumidifier going as well. Love that dehumidifier. And, oh, I put it over here. I wanted to show you the water. So this is the dirty side of the tank. Ugh, so gross. And fast forward like 30 seconds if you really don't wanna see 
this nastiness, but I'm going to dump it in the tank and show you how gross it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that looks so gross. All right. So, there you go. <laughs> it looks even more disgusting in the toilet. <laughs> All right. So, oh, look, there you are. Say hi. <laughs> So this is why I like to steam clean the carpets. I, and again, like that's really all the water I used. I don't really use a lot of water on these things for all the reasons I said before. I don't need to repeat myself, but I do think that that's part of the reason doing that a couple times a year has kept our carpets clean. So I'm gonna quickly do the bedroom and then uh, move on to the next task. So carpet in here is looking good. I finished the bedroom. And then I wanted to just show you one last thing. I, we really like this steam cleaner because, so this comes off and then the plastic piece on top of it pops off too. So it's really easy to clean this out completely so you don't have any dirt or hair or, you know, any of the yucky stuff you're sucking up. It's not like sitting in here and building up and being gross. It's really easy to clean these 100%. And then same thing for the hose. Obviously you don't want like any dirt or hair sitting in here. So they act, it comes with this attachment and it goes on top here. And then when you turn it on, you push the water button and it sprays and but then it immediately sucks it back up so you're able to flush the hose with clean water it's loud so I'm gonna show it to you I just want to explain what you're gonna be looking at first so I love this thing because I can actually clean it and it it's not getting dirty you know what I mean all right And then lastly, these canisters, both, this is the water side. And so it tells you if you wanna do like just a little area, like spot clean, it has one side for that, the measurements. And then on this side, if you're gonna do a large area, it tells you the measurements for that and how much water, how much cleaner. What I like to do when I'm done using this is open the tops and then put them upside down so that way they dry completely and I'm not storing it wet. Neat little steamer that we picked up. I'll try and find it on Amazon. I think we got it at Walmart or Target. That's like where we do all our shopping. So, but I'll try and find it on Amazon so I can link it for you guys as well. All right. It's gonna take two of us for this next one because we're gonna be safe. But what we are doing is cleaning the awning. So this looks dirty, but I just tested it on the corner to see if it would work because I wasn't gonna film it if it didn't. So this is a magic eraser mop and we've heard all over Facebook that this is amazing for cleaning awnings. And so far it does look amazing. So yeah, that's, that's the next task is to clean this awning. And we have been very neglectful. This thing is absolutely disgusting. So I don't even know if you could tell how bad but we have a bunch of dead bugs in here and yeah, it's just bad. I'll show you the test corner so you can actually see the difference. <laughs> see that white spot? <laughs> That's the test corner. So yeah, it's supposed to be white, not brown. <laughs> Okay, we're changing the plan of attack because I started doing it and it's literally just moving the mud around. So I think we got a good layer of dirt on there. So we whipped out the pressure washer and we're gonna put on low and then kind of rinse it as we're moving along to get the actual dirt off.
All right, so the Magic Eraser Mop, I would say is a win. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So maybe we'll do it more often, <laughs> uh, probably similar to the screens. Um, and yeah, adding in the, the pressure washer really helps. This is a battery powered Ryobi one, which I really like because uh, I can use my existing Ryobi batteries with it. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to keep using this. It's been great for us so far. Mm -hmm. And then if you are looking for something like this, uh, but you don't have the Ryobi battery system, Lippert actually just came out with one and it actually can siphon from a bucket. Uh, yeah, so now we're just gonna let the awning air dry before we put it away. And hopefully it's a once every three years job. <laughs> A little, maybe, maybe once a year. Yeah. All right. Once a year. We'll do it once a year. Okay. The final deep cleaning item for us was our oven. So this item doesn't get as much love as it should. So it's definitely time for a deep cleaning. To tackle this, I actually bought the finest steel wool that you can get. And then I'm using Awesome, which is again, one of my favorite products. This process took a lot of scrubbing, and to be perfectly honest, the oven didn't get as clean as I wanted, but frankly, I'm pretty tired after all of this, so I just called it a day. I hope this video gave you some motivation to tackle your deep cleaning tasks, and let us know in the comments what your deep cleaning tasks are that we may have forgotten. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. You look really red. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right, I got more windows to do. Is that my sock? <laughs> you gave it to me, shut up. I don't mind my feet in the shot, I just don't like your feet in the shot. <laughs> oh, you crack yourself up, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take it off first. <laughs> I swear it's easy, okay.